Cindy, I lost your bio, but uh, I know enough about you that I don't. I don't need a bio. Cindy is. Uh, met Cindy about, I don't know, five, six years ago, and, and we really clicked because she's really in the statistics. She worked with a multi-state, big-time PI firm up in Philadelphia that was in D.C. and Maryland. I don't know, all a bunch of states. And she is a believer in in tracking everything, and I'm always a big guy on statistics and seeing where, what works and what doesn't work. So we hit it right off. Uh, she also did a, uh, a series, I think it's called what Power Power Marketing for Attorneys, which is, uh, I bought it, she, was, she had it, and I bought it uh, and listened to it, and it just resonated with me, and I said, this lady knows what she's talking about. And she came and spoke uh, once or twice when we were very small. Actually, I think it's when it was called something else. And uh, she's, her business has really grown. She's a consultant now and does really big into social media and, 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 and videos and things like and TV, state TV, state law TV or something. I know it's really good. And uh, she works with high-profile lawyers that are very successful across the United States. She is just a guru. And, you know, I like people that tell you not all the theory. I want somebody to give me the meat. Uh, and, you know, you hear all this stuff about social media and all this stuff and this and that. But really, when's the last time somebody really told you what to do to make it work and how it works to get your clients? So that's what you're going to get here today. So, Cindy, we thank you for coming and sharing. I'm going to bring this up, too, just in case sure, I sure. need it. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh... Benji has me all set up here for technology, so I'm going to do my best. I've got a lot of things uh, to go through, a lot of things that I want to go live to the Internet. I want to show you a couple of videos and things like that. I'm going to tell you right now, we've got, um, I think, till 3.15. So I'm going to give you the outline so you'll know exactly what my plan is here. I'm going to explain the title first, and then we're going to go through a short video, three minutes, about the mind shift, and then I'm going to do this presentation. No more theory. Just show me the money, please. And then I'm going to do a case study where it showed the attorney the money. And we're going we're gonna to reverse engineer exactly what he did in an integrated social media campaign that resulted in cases. And that's what you all want to know. Um, the next thing is I'm going to do a case study, a brief one, of something that just came up this week. And that is the North Carolina insurance company bailout. And I imagine some of you in your states have dealt with tort reform and had issues like that. Well, the, New Jer the uh, North Carolina trial lawyers I have a few of them that are uh, clients of mine, so I, I did a social media campaign for them. And I want to just show you a little bit of that and how quickly you can get the word out on the Internet. Because we did it. It was basically done on Wednesday before I came. Um, I'm going to show you that. If we have time, I want to mention Google Places, although probably Dale's going to mention that or some other people, but it's so important. And then finally, what I'm hoping is we'll have 15 minutes, and I'd just like you to ask questions about social media. So let me jump in. The first thing is... I was talking to Ken when he first talked to me about this uh, opportunity, which, by the way, I appreciate. Um, I, I, I was asking about, you know, I said, well, what, you know, what topic do you have in mind or whatever? And he said, well, you come up with the topics relevant to social media. And when I thought about it, I, I came up with no more theory, please, just show me the money. And here's exactly why. Because when I talk to lawyers across the country, every time you talk about social media, almost invariably, within five minutes, the question is, but how's it going to get me cases? Right? That's the question. How's it going to get me cases? And I can tell you that what I see is I, I think that it's very misunderstood because, honestly, I, social media, I believe, is the most powerful thing you can do right now. Uh, but it has to be an integrated approach. And I think that there's so much misunderstanding about social media that those integrated approaches are not being taken. And therefore, nobody's seeing the money. Right? Nobody's seen the money. You're saying, wait, I'm, you know, I have a Facebook page or I have a YouTube channel. But, but what you're going to see, I'm going to show you some specific channels and, and things like that. Because the bottom line is we're going to go through an, an actual campaign that has resulted in clients. Okay? And that's what I think you want to know. I'm going to show you how to do that, an integrated approach. But the first thing, I'm not going to do any theory today because I know you don't want to hear that. But I have a short three-minute video, and I just want you to understand the mind shift of social media. Because social media is a mind shift. It's different 
than traditional advertising. And I think that if you just understand that mind shift, you'll be well on your way. So let me see if I can pull that up here. Um, let's see, we want to go to, and it's about three minutes, okay? In June of 2010, Columbia Pictures distributed a feature film, The Karate Kid, that had cost just $40 million to make. It quickly became a sleeper hit, which means it was kind of like the little engine that could. Nobody ever expected it to reach the mammoth gross revenue it did, over $359 million. The return, almost 9 to 1. What drove the success, and why would that matter to you, an attorney? Because success leaves clues. If you're like many attorneys, you would be rather pleased with a 9 to 1 return. Yet some of you are still settling for a two-to-one return from your yellow page ads. Why? Because it's what you've always done and because you are much more content to pay to play than to participate to play. There was another sleeper hit in 2010. It was social media. And with its emergence came a mind shift. The shift from impressions to connections from campaigns to conversations, from outbound marketing to inbound marketing, from hunting to fishing. The currency of traditional mass media marketing, like Yellow Pages and TV, is money, while the currency of social media marketing is great content. Oh, and there are ground rules to social media. The biggest ground rule is be authentic and genuine. Give value first, and do so without any expectation of a return. I work with attorneys throughout the country and I know what your big question is. Will it bring me cases? That's kind of like saying, no more theory please, just show me the money. The fact is, you'll only see the money once you understand and embrace the mind shift. When you do that, you will be positioned for exponential growth because social media is scalable word of mouth. Some have called it word of mouth on steroids. You see, it's still all about relationships and it always will be. Social media and technology just accelerate the pace at which those relationships can be cultivated and then facilitate the logistics of viral and exponential growth. The real power of social media marketing is to authentically architect an integrated plan whereby you give consumers a platform to be heard, to connect with each other, and to connect with your brand. And if you do that, you have the potential to turn your brand into a sleeper hit in 2011. Okay, now let's jump in to the presentation. I just wanted you to see that because I want you to understand you know, a couple of things that were said there. It's about, it's about connections. It's about relationships. And so ultimately, when we've done, and Ken said I did statistics, when I started out, I focused a lot on statistics. And what I found is something you guys already know. I just kind of, kind of tried to nail it down so we knew pretty conclusively conversion ratios and things like that. But what we found very conclusively is that you, when you start to get into word of mouth relationships and referrals, you, d you see a whole different set of numbers you see conversion ratios that are fantastic. And so when you look at the return on um, advertising, and advertising is great and need to be, needs to be part of your integrated plan, obviously. But when you look, for instance, um, if you look at Yellow Pages right now, I'm seeing, I'm seeing conversion ratios of about 8%. All right? If you go to word of mouth, you may see 40 50%. So you think about that because we all have finite budgets, whether it's financial budgets, resources, time, etc., and you want to make sure that you're spending your time and your resources so that you achieve an optimal turn, return on investment. So, okay, the, the campaign that I talked to you about, and, and maybe um, some of you might have seen, I think um, Ken actually had me do a brief video um, for his channel, and what I talked about is there's two things that you need when you talk about social media on the web. You want traffic and conversion. But ultimately, that's rooted and that occurs because of relationships, all right? And so when I was talking to Ken, we were in the midst of a integrated social media campaign that I just did recently in four firms. And in those firms, what I said is, by the time I come to Pilma, we'll have finished those campaigns, and I'm going to reverse engineer it and tell you what we did and tell you what the results are. So we're going to try and, we're going to try and do that at the end of this presentation. But first of all, 
use my clicker here, I want you to understand that social media is an audience with audiences. And so when you go out there in social media and you become, uh, you know, you start to understand how to get positioned there, you know, the people that you're reaching, they have their own audiences. And that's why the potential exists for exponential growth. And that is not something you may have seen in the video where it talked about it's, it's scalable word of mouth. It's like word of mouth on, on steroids. Because in social media, you're talking to, to 20 people or 30 people, or I think the average number of Facebook fans right now is about 140 or 150, and that's growing. But they all have their own audiences. And so that's where you can get in to exponential growth. If I were to tell you, if you were to say to me, Cindy, all right, I want to, get in, I want to do a social media campaign. Where do I start? First of all, it has to start with planning, and it has to be integrated. All right. I think you probably all have Facebook pages, but it's, you, you need to have a Facebook page, and I'm going to show you um, some examples in, in a little bit. But you have to have pages that are set up correctly. And one of the other things I'm seeing is I'm seeing people that are setting up their social media presence, and it looks really poor. Okay, so if you're not using custom graphics on your social media pages, on your YouTube channels, if you're not setting up playlists on YouTube, if you're not setting, um, you know, putting in your keywords and using the proper tabs and setting up custom tabs, all of which is not all that difficult, then, then you're not setting a campaign up right and you're going to have difficulty. There's seven, seven steps that I would advise you to be involved in if you're going to set up your social media plan. Okay, Facebook, because Facebook is right now the epicenter of everything. All right, in social media. You need to have a Facebook page and it needs to be set up with custom graphics and things like that. In the course of this conversation, and we don't have, I know that our time, of course, it will always be limited, and so I'm going to move through, but one of the things I'm going to share with you are, are some of the tools that I use every day. All right? So in, in Facebook, first of all, if you don't have a graphic designer uh, around, you can go, there's a couple of sites. You can go to um, elance.com. You can go to guru.com, and you can go to 99designs.com, and you can get graphic design done very inexpensively. The other thing I want to say to you is most of you probably have someone in your life, whether it's a, a child, a niece, a nephew, an employee's son or daughter or whatever, that's, that's in their late teens or their early 20s, and they could do a lot of this for you. And I'm going to tell you how I got the guy that just did that video. Oh, his video was pretty good, don't you think? The kid that did that was 16. And you know how I found him? My nephew on Facebook, they were doing these student films at school. And I started seeing some of these films because my nephew was in them. I said, Zach, the kid's great. I said, does he want a job? I posted that on Facebook. The next day, the kid contacted me and said, yeah, I want a job. He was working at a supermarket for 8 bucks an hour. I snagged him. The kid is fantastic. He's 16 years old. He did that all himself. All right. So there's people out there, and what you don't realize is the, the generation, and some of you are, most of you are probably a lot younger than me, but there, there's a generation out there right now that this stuff is so intuitive that it's likely that you can find people that can do, do the custom graphics for you. Because I'm going to address one thing that I'm sure is going to come up at one point. Do I do it in-house? Do I outsource? And I think it needs to be a hybrid for this reason. Ultimately, in social media, you need to have an authentic voice. And so to have an authentic voice, you really need to have some element of it happening in-house. I do not think that social media should be completely outsourced. I really don't. Now, you can outsource elements of it, all right? Because I, and, and also, I don't think that, that attorneys should be doing the social media. That's not your forte. But I think you need to have a hybrid approach to make sure that it's done in a quality way. YouTube, we're going to talk about that. Ultimately, in social media, and you may have seen in the video, the um, social media is based on the way that you get the visibility is great content. I already forget the word that I use, the currency. Okay, the currency of advertising is, is money, right? And so you spend money and you pay to play. And you know what? Everybody's very comfortable with that because that's how it's already been done. But in social media, you can't pay to play. If you're going to thrive in a social media environment, you have to participate. But I don't want you to be overwhelmed because there are tools and, and there are things that can be, you know, that you can, you can mastermind and, the, and it can be outsourced. Social media, for the most part, is free and people like that, but they go out and they try and do it for free and, and then it just doesn't work. 
Well, even though there's not dollar amounts, there are resources that have to be allocated, and that's in time, finding people that set things up competently. But content is exactly what social media is based on. Social media will, has the potential to position you as a thought leader. Bob, Bob Battle and I did a little project together, and, and you know, one of the things that, that, that I was trying to, to do with that, and it was just a, kind of a one-time thing, but it was really fun, and, and you know, Bob's a thought leader. Well, you know how Bob became a thought leader? He puts out a lot of great content. And you put out a lot of great content, you can, you can become a thought leader. Think about the dollar amount of being a thought leader. And, and you're going to see a, another video in a little bit where one of my clients talks about, and this is actually the video where uh, one of the guys, David Daggett, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, talks about return on engagement and the value of that. If you're a thought leader, if you're the one that, that the press comes to for a comment, if you're the one that people have heard about because you're so top of mind because of all your great content, then, then that has a value to it. But it's not measured the same way that advertising is. It's measured a little differently. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and again, and pardon me for taking a little drink here, but in working with attorneys, what I found, they're very busy, okay? And, and years ago, I would say, you know, can you do this article, this blog post, when blogs first started? Well, can you just do a blog post for me? I never got the blog post. They didn't get around to it, or if they did, we kept revising it 20 times. And so it, it, it became a difficult process. One of the things that we do is try to systematize whatever we do. And so one of the things I needed to do was systematize content creation rapidly. And here's what we came up with, and it works really well. Um, take an attorney, and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to use David Daggett as one of my examples today because I've, I've been with him for years, and he's the one that's going to share the results of the case study. He's going to give us his comments. All right, so with David, here's what, here's what we do. I had him set up. Um, I had him set up with a camera. Now, let me tell you about cameras, okay? Flip video camera, you've all heard about. It's a great little camera. The Kodak Xi8 is even better, and here's the reason. Because it has an external microphone. You can buy the Kodak Xi8 on Amazon for $125. Now, I understand, you know, that, that it's great to have a $3,000 camera. I have a $3,000 camera, and we have a studio, but I do not think that's necessary. I don't think you need to make that kind of an investment. And actually, some of the things I'm going to show you today we kind of did it remotely, and the attorneys are using their $125 camera with their $3 tabletop tripod and the $20 microphone. So all total, when you see the video, for instance, you're going to see one of David, that was done, he had less, less than $200 worth of equipment. All right? But here's what we do. Write down your top 10 questions that, that clients ask you. You want to create content and get visibility on the web? Okay, just jot down the top 10 questions that, that clients ask you. And what I do with my attorneys, because we do this every month, we do a, a topic a month. So I'll say, all right, and actually, <laughs> to, to try and help it a little more, because sometimes I don't get around to that part either, I usually write the questions too. But um, so if we do like the top 10 questions for auto, and then maybe next month we do the top 10 questions for Social Security, top 10 questions for workers' comp. All right, here's our system. The attorney sets up that little camera under 200 bucks, right, 125 bucks. I give them a little instruction. As a matter of fact, if you want some tutorials on how to use the Codex i8, I had my team create them, and they're on youtube.com forward slash Cindy Speaker. We cre and I think it's under the social media playlist, but because I, I, have to, I, I, I need the attorneys to be able to shoot competently, competently and understand framing and things like that. We did a couple little videos so they understand how to do that. All right? They shoot those videos, and usually what I do is I get on the phone with them, but you certainly wouldn't need somebody on the phone with you Write down your 10 questions, sit in your office, and one at a time, answer them, all right? If you don't, if you don't have <laughs> a 16-year-old or somebody to edit them for you because they need to look polished, you want, you want things to look nice, you can go to a place like Elance or Guru, and you can get them very easily edited up. What we typically do, we take the attorney's video, we put on a title and an end screen. Sometimes we have to put a disclaimer on if we use some stock photos, which we get from iStock Photo. All right. So, so basically, you put these videos together, and then, we, and then what we're going to talk about is content distribution, which I should be going through here. Let me just back up a little so you see the slides. Facebook is your epicenter. This is an example of a Facebook page with a custom graphic, All right, and that's, that's David's. Um, oh, you know what? You, pulled up, <laughs> you guys pulled up the wrong presentation. Um, 
You know what? I might need you for a second, Benji. Th this is not the correct presentation. I need to go back to the jump drive. Um, let's see here. If you can come up, I think it's I think it says Rev two final or something like that. It's my mistake because I had too many presentations on there. So you go to Pelma. Let's see which one it is there. It's going to be. Um, I believe it's Rev two. Is that the last one? Three. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Perfect, right there. Okay, so Facebook's your epicenter. There's some custom graphics there on Facebook. Um, YouTube, when you set up your YouTube channel, what I want you to understand is if you do these little, if you do these little things to make this an integrated plan, honestly, it is a wide open field out there, and I guarantee you, you can be, you, the opportunity exists for you to be the best social media firm in your market. It's wide open. You're going to see why when I start to show you some of the results. That's a YouTube channel that's set up. All right, you can see, for instance, that it says seven-ish law. You can see that on the right, those are playlists. And so what we do is it's an organized thing. For instance, with Randy there, that's, there's a playlist of he's big in motorcycles. So there's a whole playlist, motorcycle videos. There's a playlist of auto accident videos. And each playlist is basically 10 videos, right, where he answered 10 questions. Content creation is what we're talking about. I like to create content on video. I, I, I like video a lot. My, my graduate degree is in TV and film. But there's another reason. First of all, con video indexes very, very fast. Very, very fast. And the second thing is, once you have it as a video, you can also strip out the transcript. You can do the article, the blog source, the podcast, and they can all be submitted. But how do you submit them? And that's where you go to your content distribution. Because it is not enough for you to create content and put a couple videos someplace, right? It's not enough. You have to have a content distribution system. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a big, big tip right now. It's a tool. It's my, if, if I lost this tool, I could not run my business the way that I run it today, all right? If you get nothing out of, if you get nothing out of, out of this, I want you to take a look at this tool. It's called Traffic Geyser. How many of you heard of it? Okay, some of you have heard of it. There's another version called Tube Mogul. How many of you have heard of Tube Mogul? All right, about the same. They are distribution systems, and here's what happens. I take that video, and what I usually do is I do it in, in I do 10 videos at a time. We upload them into Traffic Geyser. Traffic Geyser is an aggregator, and it's a distribution system. Tube Mogul, I think, is free, or there's a low cost for it. Traffic Geyser is much more robust. It's a, it is a complicated program. And actually, I know the guy that founded the program because I was in his mastermind group. And he's the guy that coaches Tony Robbins on video stuff. Um, he coaches Paul Abdul. The guy's a genius. Now, it's a complicated program. I've been to the West Coast several times to, to go to conferences to understand the program. But I'm telling you, get somebody on your team that understands that program, and you will be the number one firm, the social media firm in your market. N no contest. No contest. Because here's what happens. You upload a video into Traffic Geyser, all right? And it'll take you a little while to upload it. You upload that video into Traffic Geyser, all right? And then you prepare it. And preparing it means you choose the keywords. Most of you probably either you have somebody to, that tells you what words to use or you do your keyword research. Um, and then you, you write descriptions. And you certainly want to target the words that you want to rank for. So in putting that language in, you're preparing the video. You'll then go through a whole series, a couple pages of, do I want to be under a law category, a business category, a politics category, whatever it is, and you put all of that in, and then you hit the button, and it goes out. I'm, I'm going to tell you what happens is, when it goes out there, within probably 24 hours, if you check those keywords, you're going to start seeing yourself showing up. One of the things that Google has done fairly recently is they've made a change. They're moving towards a change. It's kind of right now um, both ways. It used to be that when you went to Google.com and you put in uh, Winston-Salem auto accident lawyer, not only, you, would, you remember when the, you would see videos on that page? And you still do a little bit. But for the most part, when you want to see the videos now, you go to the video tab. Some people, I, I had an attorney say to me, well, you know, I don't know if my clients are going go to know to go to the video tab. Social media, you, or it, it's, 
um, it's progressing so rapidly that that will soon become mainstream knowledge. I don't think it is mainstream knowledge yet. It is to the younger people. But if you go to google.com, uh, you'll see some stuff on the web page, but you'll see the video page plastered. Now, here's why this is an opportunity for you. Because everybody, pretty much everybody's doing YouTube, right? But if you go and you index these terms and you go to, to do a search in Google, your videos, you're not just going to see YouTube videos showing up. You're going to see uh, Coego and um, Daily Motion and all of these places that nobody else has even heard of. And so it gives you this huge competitive advantage. It really does. And I'm telling you this because to tell you the truth, some of my clients would not like that I'm telling you these tools. I want to, I want to give you, I really want, want you to understand it. But frankly, I'm, 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 I'm hedging that most of you are never going to do this. And so that's good for my clients, <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> but if a few of you do, I hope you're not in my client's markets. But uh, all right, let's talk about tribe building. Because when you go to tribe building, it needs to be cross-platform. And again, we're going to get to the examples real quick here. But when I say cross-platform, you're working on Facebook, you're working on YouTube, but you want to integrate that into other things. For instance, when we, we did a, a campaign recently in this, this uh, Facebook integrated campaign, and what we did is we set up a sweepstakes on Facebook. We drove traffic using a video, kind of a PSA that we put together. As a matter of fact, you saw it in the video earlier. It's called Distracted Driving. And um, my guys did this, this Distracted Driving video. And what we did is we put together a sweepstakes around that so that it, it was done on video, uh, it was done on YouTube, and then the sweepstakes on Facebook. And then we drove traffic to an opt-in form, created an email list, um, and then we also sent an email, and then we created a client advisory panel, all from the same program, because it was an integrated program. And some other thing, oh, hi, Mike. I just <laughs> I haven't seen you for a while. Nice to see you. Well, anyway, so you also want to include things like some of the print things, like um, Newsletters, Inc. is a great, a great program. Send Out Cards is a great program. If you've never used Send Out Cards, that's a great program. And the reason is because you can send your cards out. You can upload a database, like a CSV file, into Send Out Cards. And then you can send your cards out in bulk. And, you, of course, you know, it, it's a merge. So it, it's a great way because a lot of times what I, what I do is I'll, I'll set that up as part of the campaign so that you're also doing the print part because even though for the most part people all have internet, there are a few people that are uh, probably a significant number of people that, that are going to be more prone to, to want to understand things, you know, get a print version or whatever. Everything you do today, I would encourage you to do, have a mobile version of it. All right? And, and here's, what, here's what I think really works. I, I've, I heard of a, an attorney campaign where they did a text, text campaign, text rec, and um, th to tell you the truth, I don't... I, that would not be that would not be what I would do, for for right now. And I think texting, is, I think mobile is just going to explode this year. So you want to think about a mobile element. The thing that I'm recommending the most is 2D barcodes. Has anybody heard of 2D barcodes? Not too many people. Okay, a 2D barcode. You're, you're familiar with barcodes. A 2D barcode. You're going to start seeing them if you are on Google Places or any place like that. You'll start to see these 2D barcodes that show up. And what you do is you take your iPhone, or your, not just your iPhone, any smartphone, and you have a software application. You hover over that barcode, and it will direct you any place that, that, per, that, that the author of this um, wants you to go. So for instance, a lot of people are putting 2D barcodes on their Google Places maps that Google will send you if you ask them to. That 2D barcode, if, you, if, you're, uh, if somebody hovers over it, it will take them right to your Google Places account. Now, is that mainstream yet? Not really, but to tell you the truth, these are opportunities. These are opportunities, and that's what I want you to see. Only a, only a small number of you are probably going to do this, but if you do, you could own the market. They're huge opportunities. Um, texting, I, the, texting, I think you have to be careful of. I think having your, client, having your clients text so that they can get an autoresponder of a free report is good, but I would not recommend any kind of a Con, uh, you know, a continuity texting campaign at this point because I think that you could get slammed for that. And I don't think that would people would be real receptive to that. And I would only do it on, on opt-in. Foursquare, again, I usually evaluate these things. How, how many have heard of Foursquare? Okay, a few more. Foursquare is a location-based social media program. Now, you're probably more familiar with um, Facebook that does their places pages. And, and for uh, Facebook, more people know about that. But Foursquare... 
in that genre of, of location-based social media, Foursquare is definitely the market leader. Again, I don't know that I, I'm, I'm active on Foursquare, and, I, and, and it's, it's kind of an interesting thing, you, you know. But I don't know that Foursquare, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily tell you that Foursquare is going to be a help to your business, but there is one way. Foursquare is indexing very well. And so you can get a free Foursquare account, and then when you plug your name in, in, in into Google, there's a good chance your Foursquare account will, that will be high on the profile, and there'll just be one more place that you show up. Which, by the way, before I forget, let me mention something I saw the other day, and I think there's a, a legal aspect to it. I believe it was visibility.com, V-I-Z, ability.com. Is there anybody in the room that knows about that? Visibility.com. It was kind of interesting because here's what it does. You can go in, I think it's in beta, so I think it's relatively new. But you know how, I and mean, we've probably all done it, you go to google.com and you put your name in to see if you're showing up any place. You put your law firm in to see if you're showing up any place. Visibility.com takes that and leverages it. Because you go in and you do that search, right? And then you can go through with visibility.com and you can create some uh, HTML code, some embed code that you can then put in a signature. You can put you can put this in signature on your website or whatever, and basically, it'll take somebody right to the search. But what's even better, it'll take somebody right to your name search or your firm search, but through visibility.com, you can decide what you want to show up. So you can go through and say, oh, wait, I, don't, I don't want that one showing up, exit out. So then you have this nice search, and you have all these places that you show up. Credibility. It's about credibility. So those are some mobile things that I encourage you to get involved in. Metrics. You, you, have to be, you have to be keeping, keeping some metrics. And I'm going to give you another name of somebody that is a, a thought leader in, in the social media market, Mary Smith, M-A-R-I-S-M-I-T-H. Mary Smith is a guru that I learn a lot from. I really do. She's fantastic. They've called her the Pied Piper of Facebook. She's also involved with an organization called the Social Media Examiner, and they're the ones that put on the Facebook um, Summit which you may have heard about, or I think it's called the Facebook Summit. Mary Smith is actually working, I was on a webinar the other day listening to her, and she's working on a custom dashboard because there's so many things you can track. What you, need, you, you can't track them all. You, you don't want to overwhelm yourself with all this stuff, and that's why planning an integrated campaign from the beginning is so important. But if, if, but if you, you know, follow her stuff, she's working on a, a custom dashboard. Some of the things you want to track, I mean, you want to track impressions, you certainly want to track the growth in your Facebook fans, your Twitter followers, your LinkedIn uh, connections, and, and some of the growth. You want, to, you want to track comments are extremely important. And I was talking to somebody from Avo this morning because I'm so impressed with that, uh, that group. And he was saying how, and they're going to speak tomorrow, but I, what he was saying is how um, even though the, the customer reviews, do, the consumer reviews do not factor into their algorithms, but that's the place most people go to. And so your, your reviews are very important, and, and you need to be um, measuring that type of thing. Um, let me go to now a couple of live examples. And I'm going to go out of this. And all right. I talked about a Facebook campaign. I'm going to bring up some live examples on the internet here. OK. When we did the. Um, when we did the, the campaign for, um, for David Daggett, and, and I, as I said, I did it for four other attorneys. Let me go over to, um, you, saw the, you saw the video. Let me go over to this uh, wildfire app page. Here it is. Okay. Um, let me tell you how it worked. Um, you know what, actually, I'm going to go to a campaign that's live now, because the four that I did with that sweepstakes are actually complete. But let me just explain how you, how, you, how you do this. OK, an integrated social media campaign. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through a live case study. All right, David Daggett was the first attorney I did this with. He's in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Here's what we did. We started off with the video that I showed you. Distracted driving is like driving blind. We depicted that. All right, And then what we created is a distracted driving awareness social media promotion. One thing that I want to make sure we're all on the same page with, and I think that we probably are, but let's, let's just clarify that. In the social media space, it's about giving value. It is not about sales pitches. It is about giving value. 
how, and remember, the, con the currency of social media is great content. So you want to see cases from your social media campaign? Make sure you got, you've got great content out there. Getting in front of a Xi8 video camera and answering 10 questions that, that your clients are asking you, that's good content. People have those questions. That's good content. You need to have good content. So we, we anchored the, the sweepstakes, the integrated campaign. First of all, we chose a topic, and that is distracted driving. Another great topic, I think, is drunk driving awareness. And so these are topics that you're giving, consu you're giving the consumer values, a uh, value, all right? So we did that, and if you look at this, this is a, another campaign I'm running right, right now. But here's how we set it up. Come in here, okay, this is the campaign. You come in, and this one's a little different. What we did is we have a banner ad, all right? If you click through this banner ad, and as I said, with the distracted driving, you would click through the banner ad, and it would go to the video. And you would enter the sweepstakes, and in the other one you were entering a sweepstakes. Here it's a contest, this one's a little different, but you would enter, and then this mechanism would allow you to share. You could post it on your wall, and you could share with other people, and it brings you into a forum where you can just kind of click through and invite your friends. Now why is that important? Because I'm gonna give you another, this is another tool. There's a lot of places where you can do these sweepstakes and contests. There's a great um, company out there called Wildfire App. And Wildfire App is the one that I use. And having studied this, because I, I just enjoy this kind of stuff, so I really do uh, go to a lot of webinars and things like that. I think Wildfire App right now, the one, it's the best one I've seen. All right? And so you go out and these campaigns, basically you can run these sweepstakes and these campaigns for about 150 bucks. That's the only cost. So it's not that bad. So what we did is we did this campaign, and, and as I said, I can't show you the one we did because it's already complete, but this is one we, that we set up the other day. And what you see, you see you would come in, you would enter the contest, and so with the, the distracted awareing, awareness um, contest, they would come in and they would enter the contest, and then there would be a way that they could go through and share it, post it on their wall, etc. And then we had carry over because the video, when you click through the banner and went to the video, it would then take you over to YouTube. And so you could then, you, that was carrying it into YouTube. And then the other thing we saw is that on the YouTube video, it was being shared from YouTube to Facebook. And then as I told you, what we did is we took that, that same campaign, and let me, I want to show you the analytics here. These are the actual analytics right out of the account. We ran the campaign for three weeks. All right. Now, during those three weeks, and, and by the way, the sweepstakes was set up on a custom page. And, it, and Wildfire App will walk you right through how to set that up. And they have many options, not just a sweepstakes. You can do contests and other things. They'll walk you through how to do it, and then it becomes a custom tab on your website. During those three weeks, 820 unique visitors visited that sweepstakes page. Now, there was a prize associated with it, and it was a flip video camera. 829 people visited. 464 of them entered. You know what that means? That means we just put together a nice little... 464 person email list. That's a pretty nice little list in three weeks. It cost us $150, all right? And so we, we, we now have an email list, and this campaign converted at 56%. That's pretty good. Let me just tell you something that I heard the, uh, uh, it was about a week or two ago that said that, um, no, it was 80%, 80 percent of people that join a Facebook page for a brand do so because of some type of a promotion. So they... They're looking for what can, what can they get. It might be, it might be uh, you know, a great ebook or something like that. But they're looking for value. And this is, a, a, this is an arena where you give value. So what we did, we set this up. We're going to give out a flip video camera. Now, when, when the person won, and again, wildfire, that $150 facilitates all the logistics of the whole campaign for us. We then go and we give the um, David and his, and his law partner, they go and they deliver the camera. And I said, take your can take your own flip video. He had a, David has a flip video right now. Um, I think he took that one instead of those I8. I said, the guy that won, I said, take the camera and videotape you awarding the guy the prize. So we did that. We got another video. We put that up on David's YouTube channel and on his Facebook page. And people were saying, congratulations, congratulations. And that was more engagement and things like that. All right. And then we sent an email out to those people. Not only did we send them an email, but we said, Listen, you know, we really are committed to um, customer service and, and how can we serve your needs in the best way. So we, something that I've done before, as a matter of fact, when I was at Ken's 
conference a few years ago, I talked about client advisory panels. I've always done client advisory panels. Well, now I'm testing doing client advisory panels in the social media space. So we took that email list, we sent the email out, now we invite them to be on the client advisory panel. Now we have a list of people, and what I plan to do in the very near future is set up an event for the client advisory panel. It does two things. Number one, it gives you great market research. And number two, it achieves engagement. So that is that. And I'm going to go ahead, because I want to have time. Does anybody have, I'm not going to ask the questions yet, but just so I know where to stop. Do, do people have questions that they want to ask? Does anybody think they're going to ask questions? Huh? Well, you think you'll, I, I want to know whether to stop short so we do questions. Well, we'll, we'll play it by ear. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the video because what I said to David, I asked him to actually come with me. We, we actually tag teamed. I had him come with me when I spoke at, oops, stop that. I spoke at AHA last year and I had David come with me so, so that we had the, the attorney perspective. And it was so much fun. I asked him to come today, but he was, um, he was tied up. But basically I said, David, just give me the overview. Do a, do a video for me. And, and tell the attorneys, that they want to know, how did this help your firm? Because if you're going to do all this, you want cases. You want it to turn into money. You want, to turn, you want it to turn into something that impacts your bottom line. You don't just want to spin your wheels. So I want, to, I want you to hear what David says. Actually, let me do this. So let me just play this. About three. Hello, my name is David Daggett. I'm an attorney with Daggett Shuler Attorneys in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I want to tell you about a campaign we recently ran at our office with the help of Cindy Speaker. As we all know, distracted driving is an e increasing threat and harm okay, on our roadways. This road is the video I talked about. And one of the things that oh, we really up. need to do is provide information through communication to our friends and the public regarding the dangers of distracted driving. So here's what Cindy did. She put together this incredible uh, distracted driving infomercial. I'll call it an infomercial. And this is it. It's, it's 30 or 40 seconds or so, that we were able to distribute through social media outlets, namely Facebook. And what Cindy did is she made a contest out of it where the winner of the contest would get a customized flip video camera from our law firm. So, uh, and all the people had to do was to promise that they would watch the video and send it along to at least one other person. Now, this grew a little bit exponentially. First, on our Facebook page, we added about 400 or so fans, or likes as they now call them, uh, but also on YouTube, Cindy was able to track how the YouTube video was then passed along to other people which extrapolates into hundreds and even thousands of views. What does this do for you and for your law firm? Well, what it does is it engages your clientele, spreads the message that we're concerned about the public and concerned uh, for the public's safety, and it engages a relationship and an, op and an opportunity for ongoing communication. Uh, this is Cindy's expertise. She does a great job of it. Uh, thank you, Cindy. You've been a longtime friend, and I appreciate your help. Okay. Make sure I close out the right thing here. All right. So, what what David said. Now, just to to kind of clarify a few things. So, what was the value of that campaign, and how is that showing him the money? All right. Number one, he added about 400 people to his Facebook page. He built an email list of about 450 people. He built a client advisory panel of about 20 people. And, I, and we'll grow that. That's a starting point. All right, so those three things. But here's, here's what I think is the biggest payoff. He reached some influencers in the market. 
When, when the video went live, here's what happened. David started getting calls from people in the community saying, you know, we really appreciate what you're doing, educating the public on this, um, on this, you know, on the, with the video. They liked the message and they felt like, hey, you're doing good things in the market. So that message resonated with people and it reached some influencers. And then what happened is they started sharing it because you understand this. So on David's Facebook page, they click share and they share it to their wall. In one firm, in another firm, we had a, um, a news, a traffic person from the local news shared it from her page and she has a very large following so it went to all of those people. So that's where that exponential growth could come. Now how do the, the relationships show you the money? Did somebody, you know, it doesn't, those, those contacts don't mean that you had somebody call and get a case, although I, I know that that's going, to, that's going to happen because word of mouth leads to good, it leads to engagement, and it leads to cases. But here's what I think is so important, is don't discount social media because it doesn't work the same way as advertising. When somebody calls from TV, you pretty much know they called because they saw your TV ad. But you don't always know when it's social media. But 70% of people, when they're making a decision about a product or a service, the research shows that 70% of them go to the internet first. And that's not necessarily just to find somebody, because sometimes it's to confirm you. And if it is to find somebody, once they find somebody, they want to confirm you. And so if you put your name in Google, or your firm in Google, and there's a page of listings, that's not helping you that much. But if you're doing this kind of stuff, and there's eight pages, you and your firm, and you're all these social media places because you use the tools, then that leads to credibility, and I believe it creates a tipping point. And some of you, probably most of you heard of Malcolm Gladwell's book a few years ago, The Tipping Point. And so I've had attorneys say to me sometimes, um, and, and we're all figuring this out. There's no blueprints. I don't have all the answers. I'm out there testing every day. I don't have all the answers, but we test and measure and we kind of figure it out as we go. But, but one of the things that I, that I believe in, I, have one, I had an attorney actually say to me, I don't think I want to do that sweepstakes because I'm afraid I'm going to get people from other states and that won't help me. Well, I, honestly, I think that's short-sighted. You will get people from other states. I guarantee that. But let me ask you this. If you go to somebody's Facebook page and you see a thousand fans and you go to and, and, a thousand fans and you go to somebody else's Facebook page and you see a hundred, isn't there something in your mind that kind of says, hmm, the guy with a thousand might have a little more credibility? I believe that numbers can create a tipping point. Now I certainly believe that ideally we want everybody from our home state, even our home community, and that's the best thing. It's not going to happen in the social media place, and the fact is we're in a global economy, and I can tell you with every campaign I've done on YouTube, and we have thousands of followers on YouTube, my state law TV YouTube page has, I think, 60,000 followers. And I can tell you right now, I get emails all the time from people in Belgium and other countries, but I'm okay with that because it's creating a tipping point because there's a credibility in having a presence. And this, these, are, these are tools that you can use to create a presence. Now, we have a little more time, and I'm going to tell you one thing. There's another way to use social media. And, and at our office, what we call it is my Code Red program. And this is actually really fun to me. Um, if something happens and it's time sensitive, and I'll tell you the first time I tried this, the Hudson River plane crash. The Hudson River plane crash occurred. Thankfully, no one was injured. But I was watching it. I was actually with a friend of mine that day. I saw it happen. I said, you know what, I want to, I'm gonna, I want to try something here. I went home. I bought HudsonRiverPlaneCrash.com. All right? And then I set up, I think, a blog. And that night, and I hope you don't find the video because it's really terrible. I have editors and production people, but I was there at, in the office that night myself. So what I did is I actually did a PowerPoint slide and a voiceover. I put that video together for Hudson River Plane Crash. And what I did is I commended... Captain Sully put the video out through traffic guys, and again, this was simply a test to understand the technology. Put it out, and the next day, if you put in Hudson River plane crash, we were on the first page. That was a simple little test, but, but what happened is I think my video on Coego is the one that ranked, not YouTube, because so the power of, video, of, of social media is very strong. Now, 
Last week, a couple of my attorneys in North Carolina facing legislation, they're waiting and waiting for this bill, I think the word is they call it, waiting for it to drop. And they wanted me to do a social media campaign. I kept saying, I, I wrote scripts and I'm like, you know, I, I don't know, who, what's the call to action? Who do I drive them to? And we couldn't get the information. As it turned out, believe it or not, and this is probably, if it hasn't happened in your state, it's probably gonna happen in your state, but they, when the bill dropped, it was to be discussed like a day and a half later. So Wednesday, my team put it, basically all it was, it was 50 man hours. All right, I had all my guys working on it, 50 man hours. I'm gonna show you the campaign we put together and what happened. This is what I call a code red program. Because if you have a disaster, if you have the Middletown plant explosion, we did something with that, and, um, but you know, whatever it is, if you have an explosion, a, a horrific accident or whatever, you can use these tools that I told you today, and you can be on page one tomorrow and probably be positioned for the press when they want to know about this and the legal aspects of it, and you can do it using the tools that I showed you today, the traffic geysers and, the, and, and things like that. All right, let me see if I can bring this up here. Oh, my, I hope I didn't lose it. I think it's here. Oh, that's not it. Okay, let's see. Benji, do I just go to the, actually, it's probably this tab. There it is. Okay, so let's go to, got it. Thank you so much. Um, here it is. All right, so here's what we did. And let me go to the wall here. All right, so we set up a Facebook page. And again, all right, this is only 50 hours of work. If you have an explosion or something, a disaster, and you want to be all over page one the next day, 50 hours is not that bad. All right, we set up the Facebook page that night in my office because we, I was having trouble getting the call to action. I, and I initially, I, I directed the call to action to the governor. And uh, one of the guys, Michael DeMeo, said, that's not, the, that's not who we're going after. We want, we, want them, we want people to call their representatives, complain about this legislation. So here's what we did. We created four videos. I listened to what the attorneys were telling me. We wrote some scripts in consumer language because I am not a lawyer and I do not understand all this stuff, nor do I really want, it, want to. I just want to understand it in layman's terms. We created four videos. We set up a Facebook page, and what I did is we drove traffic to the Facebook page. On the Facebook page, what I, um, I went through and I simply did screen captures. Let me see where my, um, let's, you can't see it. Well, actually, if you, you see all these things at the top here, and then if you go to the photo tab, if you go to this photo tab, what you'll see is all I did is I went through, like this is the North Carolina representatives. Let me see if I can pull one up so you can see. All right, can you see that? All right, I simply went, oh, yeah. With the videos. With the videos. Because I took the videos, right, and I put them out through Traffic Geyser. All right, so when we put them out through Traffic Geyser, they went all over. And so in the call to action, I simply went to the state legislature site. And I did this, I screen captured using a, a tool called Snagit, simple tool. I screen captured all the Republicans. And I just made a couple albums. I did a, a representative album and a Senate album. And I put them on the Facebook page. So that when we drive traffic, and let me see if I can get back to this, so that when we drive traffic to the Facebook page, the contact information is there and they can go through and find it. Um, and you can see that we're getting, now we start, and we set this up on Wednesday. All right, and there's 162 people on it, but there's a lot of conversation here. Um, there's a lot of conversation here, there's a lot of links here. And I know next week they're going to do a TV campaign and some other things, but they're gonna drive traffic to the Facebook page. Because you know, with Facebook, you can put a lot of content here. So it can be a hub of information and people want information. But we did something else, and if I can find it, we did, um, when we put the videos out, what I did, this was a, uh, let's see, we wanna go to, all right. When I put the videos out, I keyworded them. And I talked to the guys, what are the keywords we want to use? Well, the, 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 for the, for the um, plaintiff's lawyers, for the, they, they have kind of named the campaign the North Carolina Insurance Company Bailout. So if you go to the North Carolina Insurance Company Bailout, and this is live on Google, you'll see that the videos come up. Okay, so here's, all the, here's the stuff we did. Now, the, the two videos, but then if you go down this page, all right, the next one, Facebook, that's our Facebook page. That's our YouTube video. Um, that the travel insurance is not ours. The bill versus, oh, the, um, sorry. The bill versus paid is ours. Um, almost all of these things on page one are ours. Now that's on the everything tab, but if you go to the video tab, 
then we also have lots of videos here. Now, the, the reason is because if people are looking for, for that, we want them to find our information and not the other guys. But let me show you the bill, and this happened late Wednesday afternoon. We got a name for the bill, and it was House Bill 542. So there are going to be people that are going to look for House Bill 542. That's what the bill is called. So if they do that, this is page one. Now, we're only down at the bottom here, but you can... Uh, this is there's a, this e -corp, YouTube, eCorp, Vidler, and Work on the Internet. Those four are all our videos, which are obviously talking about the bill in that it's what it's going to do to rob people of their rights. And then, of course, if you go to the video tab, you see all of them. But there's something else I did that I think is, um, is important, and I try to do this in most, um, most of our, our campaigns. I also looked at the, the four... The four representatives that sponsored the bill, one of them was Representative McComas. So for the most part, brands are monitoring their reputations online with Google Alerts or another thing. So Representative McComas, now if you, if you pull that up and she does or he does a search, our videos come up. And actually that's on just Google page one, but if you go to the video tab, they come up too. And then there's one... All right, so those are all. So Representative McComas now, who is sponsoring the bill, we want to influence, I don't even know if it's a her or him, we want to influence them. And so we also want to use them as a key word. If we go to Representative Crawford, you'll see that with Representative Crawford, our videos come up. Not only do they come up, they come up ahead of Fox Business, they come up ahead of the Huffington Post, and they come up ahead of CBS. And we did this campaign in 50 hours on Wednesday. And it's, not, it's only because of one thing, because we're using the tools, the right tools, that'll do this. And Traffic Geyser is my best tool. And like I said, I really hate giving you that. But, but honestly, I think that you know, we need to share these things with one another. So that's the best tool. Um, so basically, that, um, now, that, that's just an example of, of a campaign that, that is active right now. I, I will tell you one other quick one, and then we've got a few minutes for questions if there are any. I met, I met a woman in, in that um, actually is from Kenya, and she's doing some really good work in Kenya. And through her efforts, there was a well put in, things like that. The, the well was put in her community. It was a community of 3,000. They never had water. And so her and a couple of people went to commission the well, to dedicate the well, to videotape this. We're actually doing a documentary of the project, a very worthy project. And I know you all do your nonprofit things and things like that. She went to Kenya. Her, her um, visa is not up until the end of June, but they, when she went to get her stamp to come back, they didn't give her her stamp. So she's stuck in Kenya, and she was in the midst. There's a lot of momentum for this campaign, and she was about to set up a nonprofit. She's got a lot of support. She didn't get back. So a couple of us on the team, I, was, I, I said, look, let me do some social media stuff, and another guy started calling the senators. Both good plans. So in conjunction, we did both. So here's what happened with the social media camp. Actually, let me see if I can... Let me see if I can actually show you a little bit. So we, we do this, and I thought, all right, I've got to get, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to get to the, the key decision makers who are in the embassy. So what I did is I tried to set up something so that if they were monitoring their brands, they would start seeing it. All right, so if you put that up, so here's what I did. All right, so basically, here was my goal. You want to, you want to get decision makers because you want to, all right? And so I, I, did, some, I did some videos, and, and I tied them to the U.S. Embassy and Ann O'Kilo because what I want is I want the embassy to see that this woman deserves a second chance. So I called her a local hero. Now, you can see this is all page one stuff on the U.S. Embassy. So now it says, U.S. Embassy Nairobi, local hero, denies hero, denies hero. So here's how that worked out. The chief immigration officer emailed me. The right-hand man of the ambassador emailed me because I started putting stuff on their Facebook page, and I did it very politely by saying, we believe this is a mistake. But you know what? That, that's a, those are powerful tools that you can accomplish that. And so in ending, I just want to say to you guys, social media is worth your time, but you need to understand it. And if you go back and can, you know, if you make that, video, that first video we did that my 16-year-old boy did, that will understand, you will understand the mind shift because it's about connections and relationships, and you cannot pay to play. You have to participate to play. All right.
we're done. And does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any social media questions? One man right here does. I just asked what happened to the outcome of that campaign. Which one? North Carolina. It's still running. We just set it up Wednesday. And um, so I've been in constant touch. with. Actually, what, what they did today is they asked me, uh, there was some video online that was taken during session or something. They asked us to capture it and do a couple more videos so that the public can see what's being said. So we'll then distribute those videos as well. And how can we implement this stuff? Because, again, I've, I'm the deer in the headlights from all morning and this afternoon. How does the average firm implement this kind of program? Well, you know what? I'll tell you. that you, I gave you all the tools today to implement it yourself. All right? I don't want to be self-serving because I, I, I really mean that. But I did. Some people, and I know this from my clients, some people would like other people to handle it for them. I think there's a number of people in the room that will do that. But I sent out a one sheet. It says uh, Social Media Jumpstart Program. And what we're doing is if you want to start, get your feet wet in social media, that campaign, what I'm saying is I'll reproduce that sweepstakes that we've run in four uh, in four firms. So that's an option is to reproduce that campaign so that you have basically a jump start to social media. I think you have to get in there and get your feet wet to understand it, but I really do encourage you to whether you find people, I think you need a point person in house because this, this is not something the attorney should be doing themselves, but this stuff is just a matter of studying and learning the tools so that you can implement. It's not complicated. Uh, well, it's, it's certainly not expensive. Um, I think having the right tools is the biggest part of it. I really uh, do. Cindy, um, how long have you been working with law firms in social media? In social media? Well, I, I guess it's only been about three years. Maybe, I don't think, it, I think probably about three years. Have you been working with any firm for the entire three years? Uh, David Daggett, yeah. Okay. Could you tell us approximately how much uh, it costs uh, David to work social media with you and any other support staff that he might have in his office dedicated to social media. Right, just trying to get right. an idea of the total cost for a campaign like he's running. Yeah. Um, well, actually, the clients, that I, the clients that I work with on this um, on a routine basis, um, we, we charge them $1,500 a month. Now, they don't, um, necessarily need, they don't necessarily need support staff if I'm handling it. But if I'm not handling it, if they want to handle it in-house, I would say if you had a part-time person 20 hours a week, Okay, no, my question is, I'm trying to get an idea. Say David Daggett without using his name. So you're saying that's about, that's about, 15, Sorry. <laughs> that's about $1,500 a month. Yeah. Um, now, at, 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 are you tracking not only um, the visits, the tweets, the referrals, the forwards? Are you tracking the people that actually come to his site and that actually submit intake forms or call his office uh, inquiring about cases? If that could be done, we would do it. But I honestly, in all fairness uh, to you guys, what I'm saying is they're, they're not, they're, most people are not calling and saying, I saw, your, I saw you on Facebook and I want to sign up your case. Well, does David Daggett get that kind of information? Like, what, what does he use? He to does not. Okay. But I can tell you this. If you call David Daggett and he would talk to anyone, of you, he's a great guy, he is knocking it out of the park. Uh, I mean, he's knocking it out of the park. They have more cases than, he, than they can deal with. But I don't know that he can necessarily say, I know these five came from Facebook. But he's knocking it out of the park, and I know that he would be glad to talk to you about that. Well, so it's returnal engagement, and it's relationship building. Well, I, I understand that, but I'm trying to figure out, not from Facebook or from Twitter or from YouTube, I'm just trying to figure out uh, if he could uh, definitely attribute any of the cases coming from social media and yes. identify yes. which cases. Yes. And, and, and so how many cases... Uh, would you say in a year that he's actually converting the cases as a result of your social media campaign? Well, first of all, he does a lot of it my, himself, so it's not just me. I, I would say when he, the, the ones that he direct in a direct one-to-one -one correspondence, probably 20. But that is not all that's coming from Facebook. That's just all the ones that actually say, I got your, you from, but, but that, I, do, I believe that that's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, well, okay, so you say that he does it him, some of it himself. Does he's it, active uh, in the space. Himself, yes. not, not some person that he has in his office that's dedicated he's, to something. He's unusual in that he's just, yes, he likes to, 
He'll put posts up. I do a lot of it, but he also will interact himself. Yeah. So if we were going to get somebody who was not David Daggett in his office to do what he is doing, that would be another person that would need to be hired. You have another, you have another, you bring up a good point because here's the other thing. I don't think you can delegate your voice. And so you, you, if you do delegate your voice, you need to have a, a right-hand person that's doing that. Don't delegate your voice to my 16-year-old admin guy because he doesn't have the maturity or the understanding. So that's another good point. Well, no, I'm, I'm saying, uh, oh, assuming you can get that yeah. right-hand person, assuming you can find somebody yes. who's willing to work with you and you yes. tell them what to do yes. and you supervise them. 20 that, hours a week, Max. Tw 20 hours a week. So that, well, if you can get somebody who only wants to work 20 hours a yes. week. But even if you could, if that, to get a, somebody of a quality that you yes. would rely on to do what you're asking to do, yes. that's another 20000 a year? Yeah, something okay. like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I will say this. Where's Bill at? Bill. How, how much, uh, and I'll repeat it, Bill does all our, how, how much time do you spend a week on it? You do the blog, you do the tweets, you do the Facebook? <laughs> hour and a half a day? Okay. So he does a lot of other stuff too. I got it all hooked up to my iPhone. You got it hooked up to your iPhone? Okay. Sure. You know, I think what we're talking about with social networking is building relationships. Yeah. I don't think you can delegate or hire someone to build relationships. I agree. How many people in here know who Irene is? I'm sorry, Irene. Yeah, she's the lady that served us coffee today. Okay. So I can't delegate that to somebody. I agree. Now, she did drop the 20 bucks, and Gary Martin Hayes is honest, and he pointed it out in my inventory. <laughs> but I don't think you can delegate all of this. I, I think agree. you have to have your hands in it. Yeah. Where's my 20? I agree with that, and that's what I said in the beginning, that, that, you, that you have to be involved in this because authenticity is the biggest part of it. You can't just delegate your voice. You have to be involved in it yourself if you want to be successful. Cindy, um, when, when you have, like, Daggett, for instance, does traffic to his website increase immensely if you look in Google Analytics from Facebook and YouTube and things yes. like that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. That's a, that would be another key point. Oh, when you look at Google – thank you, Justin. When you look at Google Analytics, all right, you will see a ton of traffic coming from these Facebook sites. Yes. So, see, that's not necessarily measurable. It is in Google Analytics. But when you see a huge, me a huge proportion of your traffic when you do Google Analytics coming from social media sites – Sometimes social media sites don't get the credit because they opt in on a web form on your website. So that's a good point. Okay. We'll, go, we'll go to Jim, and then we'll go to uh... hey, Cindy. Um, Google says that they're going to place more emphasis on uh, social media, and it's going to affect your uh, rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you uh, think that means? And second question, uh, how can I find... I'm searching for Newsletter Inc. and I can't find it. Well, let me start with Newsletters Inc. because Lynn is here. And let me tell you, that's a great company. She's got a, a booth out in the exhibit hall. And they're a terrific company. I've, I've known about them for years. They're in the, uh, the hall. But you know what? You bring, up a great, you bring up a great point because that's another recent development. And, and I actually am very happy about it for a couple of reasons. Number one... I do not understand SEO. I never have. It doesn't appeal to me. So I never could really sink my teeth into it. It's extremely important. And there's experts in this room that understand it, and that's important. But with these new Google changes, they're changing towards fresh content. And so what's going to happen is, and you all know, you know, SEO is not really, it's not really cheap. And so what's happening is Google is starting to favor more and more, and it's been trending for a while, but now they've just announced it, and I think that's what you're referring to. It's all about fresh content. And that's why you need to get the $200 worth of equipment and start recording your 10 FAQs at least once a month. My attorneys do it once a month. So that basically, you've got at least 10 videos a month going up and staggered, so there's fresh content all the time. And then, like I said, strip it off. Do the transcripts and the podcast. It's not that time-consuming. Uh, Cindy, I, I recently inherited the uh, marketing and business development portfolio in our firm, which is why I'm here. And we're, we're not on page one of Google, which is a problem. As a result, pay-per-click advertising makes sense is what we were doing. But I, I, wanna, I don't want to have to do that. I'd rather get my organic site on the page one. So the company that's doing our pay-per-click advertising comes to me and says, we can also, we have, we have a product we can sell you. I'm not going to name any names. You can probably figure out who they are. 
um, for $1,800 a month, we will write and post uh, 24 articles and cast them out over the internet and drive traffic back to your site and your Facebook. What, what exactly are they doing? Is, is, is this the essence of what you're talking about here? Um, well, actually, I was, I was going to go a different place with that because Google Page One, um, I, I, I mean, to a certain degree, to a certain degree it's, yes, content creation. But, but I think that your firm needs to be involved in the content creation. Again, so you're not delegating your voice. I, I, don't, delegate, I don't delegate my voice. Um, I, although I assist attorneys, I force them to be the voice. I force them because that, there has to be an authenticity to it. But I want to mention one thing that might be helpful to you if you're not on Google page one and you want to be. Google Places. And that's another development in the last few months. Google Places has now devoting, I believe it's the first seven organic searches to Google Places. And, and here's what that means. And I, I probably don't have time to do the example, but I had prepared um, to, I, I looked up this morning Philadelphia, and it's, it's, it's actually kind of interesting. Philadelphia motorcycle accident. I'm from Philadelphia. Um, sorry, let me just show you this because it's, it actually is pretty interesting. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Sorry. Okay, so you pull up Philadelphia Motorcycle Accident Lawyer, and hopefully it searches here. Why did you spell it wrong? Oh, my, I can't spell my own city. Is that right? Philadelphia motorcycle acts. Oh, I'm on video. I'm on the video page. All right. So here's what's here. Here's what you're gonna you're gonna see. Philadelphia motorcycle accident lawyer. And I just actually just did this this morning. I thought, well, let me just look at. And I wanted to use an example where it's not somebody that I know because I don't want to. Because there's. Uh, but but if you look at this, all right. You see this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the organic searches. So the first seven searches are Google Places. The next one is Lundy Law. I don't know Lundy Law well. I know them a little bit, but they're a very big advertising firm. They're probably not all that happy that Google just gave seven smaller firms the first seven spots. Google Places is free. And, and what you do is you, you can um, actually get to the top of Google Places a number of ways, one of which is if you have a lot of reviews. But I, I won't go too far, but let me just tell you this. I looked at this this morning, and if you do Philadelphia Motorcycle Accident Lawyer, all right, and you go in here, what you're going to find is those first seven places. And I, didn't, I don't even know any of these firms. They're smaller firms. I'm in Philadelphia. These are not the big firms. But they're coming up first on the organic page. But if you come into this one, and I hope, I, I don't, you know, I hope that this gentleman is not here, but if you look at this first one, Injury Lawyer Philadelphia, who I believe is Mr. Lassen or something like that, and you look at the 34 views, to be honest with you, the 34 views, I'm sorry to say, you know, it, it looks like he paid somebody to go write those 34 views. They're, they're really very self-cerning. I, I got my money in three weeks, that kind of stuff. If you go one below and you go to this gentleman who I also don't know, or wait, where was he? Joseph, oh, down here too. Joseph Miss Mitchell, I also don't know. He's got six reviews because if you look at this places, a lot of times what I do and a lot of times, and Ava will tell you this, what consumers do, they go to the reviews. The first guy is 34, but they're all, I got my settlement in three weeks. You go to Mr. Uh, Mitchell here, there's six reviews, all right, and again, that's important, but when you go to his reviews, and it looks like I lost my, here it is, you go to his reviews, and they're, they're, they tell you stories. They tell you stories. It's not just a criminal lawyer. He has handled everything from my family's estate to the illegal search and arrest of my brother. I don't think somebody made that up. It just seems authentic. His reviews are all stories, much more credibility. But if you don't have a Google Places page, you see where it says owner verified listing? You probably all have a Google Places page. You may not all have claimed it. Go find it, claim it, and set it up. It's free. You have the potential. Can I tell them two quick tools? Sure. Two quick tools. These are two more inside tools, okay? Localsearchreviews.net and ubl.org. You know them? Okay. Localsearchreviews.net. Here's what I like about it. 
You tell somebody to go out and write reviews about you, it's not, it's not easy. And if they're not a little bit tech savvy, it's sometimes challenging. Local search reviews will, will help you with the logistics of that and getting them out. UBL will help you with citations. Why is that important? Because those are two great tools that will impact your places page. We're out of time? Yeah, but I did want to... Did you say they were writing articles or, what, or content for the website or articles? Worthless. Yeah, 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 they're worthless now worthless. with the new algorithms. Worthless. Yeah, I mean, it's worthless. gone. And that's why I say content is the currency, so you better be writing good content. That's how you're being evaluated. You can damage your brand if you're putting a bunch of generic junk out of there. You can damage your brand. It's better not to do it at all. Well, last question. How, how do you deal with the... Uh, the occasional unhappy client who goes to this page and writes a scathing review. I mean, how do you mm -hmm. address that when that shows up on your places yeah, page? Another great point, because you're going to get it. Every one of you is going to get it. And I can tell you right now, there are attorneys in this room, I, I'm sure there are, that are afraid to play in the social media space because they're scared to death they're going to get a negative review. And I can tell you right now, until you can deal with a negative review, do not get into the social media space. Because you're going to get a negative review, you're going to get a negative comment. But if you're doing good work and you're authentic, then your positive reviews are going to offset that. So, I mean, hey, that's, that's the way it goes. You're going to get them. You're going to get the negative reviews. But you know what? If you're out there and you have 10 or 12 positive reviews, it kind of minimizes the impact of one or two negative ones. But you yeah. can't avoid them. And I wouldn't erase them. Okay. Thank you, Sandy. Yes. We're going to take a 30-minute...